Well, if you really want to mobilize people for joint action, it doesn't just happen. You, you have to have a plan for the planning process. And this is the meta aspect of what we're talking about. And communication planning is required if you want that social construction, right? So re remember how we talked about all the social agreements on which so much of our lives are based. So what we're talking about is planning to have these conversations. So when I say meeting, you can think conversation, you can think discussion, you can think meeting at the coffee pot as well as sitting at a table together. And um, and creating small agreements, small agreements about shared experiences in order to create a shared understanding. So when you're facilitating a conversation, and by that I mean like initiating a conversation, taking responsibility for getting one going, a good conversation has a shape. It opens on a single point of agreement. We agree to talk. So you know from experience, if you try to talk to someone when they're going somebody, somewhere else, it doesn't really ever become a conversation. You have to agree to have a conversation. And I'll talk about what other things you can agree on at the very beginning. And then every conversation has this broadening out period. And then it has a, a point at which the conversation pivots. And the conversation begins to narrow down. And you end it. Um, with another point of agreement. I recommend that a good starting point is to start with desired outcomes. And I don't mean for the world. In this case, I mean desired outcomes for the meeting. Now, a desired outcome does not have to be a written deliverable. A desired outcome can be an intangible thing like awareness. Awareness. This is one of our stakeholder concerns or agreement. We agree to raise this issue in our next staff meeting. That is a fine desired outcome. And it's very useful to not just say explicitly what the desired outcome is, but you can even write it on the board or the flip chart. And say, and say the desired outcome of this meeting is to and, and you can, it may sound very bold to say this, obtain agreement on next steps for this. A to obtain agreement, agree on whether to have another conversation about this particular recommendation that came out of Alfred's analysis. You can have more than one desired outcome, but have it just for the time that you're meeting. When you put it up there in front of people, you can, you can corral a lot of misbehavior in meetings. So sometimes there are um, people who get off track, either because they have an itch, a social itch that just needs scratching a lot. They have to talk about something a lot. Or, or because um, they don't mean to, but they just one neuron synapses with another, and they, and they go in a different direction. If you have this written, you can always say, as a facilitator, that is a really important issue to discuss, but it's not our desired outcome for this conversation. Can we ha agree to have another time to talk about that? And actually pointing to it, makes it depersonalizes it, right? I'm not saying you, you're off track, be quiet. I'm saying this, this is our task. Can we focus on this for this conversation? And because we have this small agreement at the beginning of the meeting, and when you propose a desired outcome, it is useful to ask if people agree. Is this a useful desired outcome for us? Because this social construction process is just a series of agreements, a series of agreements that build on each other as we go along. Um, I recommend closing meetings with Bs and Cs, and again, when I say meeting, I, I, you can take it as informally as a conversation. And even if you don't do Bs and Cs together, because it's so informal a conversation that would like really strain the relationship, <laughs> well, husband, let's do Bs and Cs on that conversation. <laughs> you, you, might, you might 
Benefits and concerns. Thank you for prompting. Benefits and concerns, as we did, as we did the last couple of days. My, my apologies. Um, uh, you might write some down for yourself because it's very useful to slow down and take stock. And when you have those concerns, I wish I knew and how to, you can also identify some next steps, things that you can do before the next conversation. Um, so I've previewed some of this. Desired outcomes can be tangible, like we're going to generate a list of options for blah, blah. We're going to identify next steps for this. Or they can be intangible. I think it's very helpful to say it explicitly, to be bold. And the first times you try to say this, it'll sound a little weird. It's like these, these words don't really actually fit in your mouth or something. But the more, if you just practice, you'll find that it's pretty easy. And my experience with colleagues is that if, if you tell your colleagues what's expected from a particular conversation, they cooperate. I mean, we kind of have this inborn fear of when you say, well, I'm hoping that by the end of this conversation, we'll have agreement to do this. You're afraid that they'll say, who made you the boss? Why did you get to decide this is what we're going to do? But they don't. It's like, OK, that sounds reasonable. And they, they cooperate. So as long, if you are, really? <laughs> Even those uncooperative people can cooperate. <laughs> because everybody wants to be competent. Everybody in the conversation wants to be competent. If you tell them how to be competent, participate in achieving this desired outcome, they will. Thank you.